I'd like to change the world from where I am If I don't leave this place I know I just can't So, oh, 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 oh Won't you let me know Oh, 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 oh Where to go Where to go So welcome to part two of our West Coast series. We are in gorgeous Paternoster. Paternoster means our father, and the name could have come from shipwrecked sailors who found a safe haven here. It's one of the oldest fishermen's villages on the Cape West Coast and well known for its trademark whitewashed cottages. I invite you to join us as we make our way to meet Diane of Stonefish Studios. So Diane, hi, it's lovely to meet you. We're in Paternosta and we're in your studio shop. Really, yes, no? yes. So tell me, tell, tell me a little bit about what you do. Uh, about 19 years ago, I started Stonefish Studio in Paternosta, in this ancient building, which is, was a barn, built oh, in 1863. So, so with the idea of facilitating art and artists, uh, Hadley from Langaban and myself um, have started an art route. This was the only studio and the only gallery. And the idea is that the, the tourist or the visitor can actually walk into an artist's studio, smell the paint, touch the clay, watch the work being done. Then Langaban started with Hanley Turan. She started her Langaban artist's we are tra we've traveled up to Lambert's Bay, so we have the Lambert's Bay art route, okay. and now we're joining all the dots with Soldana and Jakob's Bay. So it's travel up the R27, take your time, visit galleries, you can take a course, you can work with clay, you can Fantastic. do an art course, you can do a bead making course. So that's the idea, it's bringing um, the visitor and the artists together. Well, it's been fantastic meeting you. I'm going to have a look through your gallery now. This is so exciting for me. I, I love what I see. And this morning we, we visited the pumpkin house. Yes. So we've started on the art route already. Diane then took us into the Columbine Nature Reserve, where we visited the Sea Shack. Here we are again meeting <laughs> with you. Um, we're at your wonderful place called the Sea Shack and it's on the way to the Columbine Lighthouse and I'd love you to tell me more about it. Yes, welcome to Sea Shack. Um, we are a little eco camp, so mm -hmm. we're environmentally friendly, we're off the grid. Oh, that's fantastic. We're solar powered mm -hmm. and um, our plumbing is all eco friendly as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, I went to the ladies, <laughs> I went to the long drop as we call it in South Africa, no? <laughs> but it's quite fancy. It's a fancy. Oh, it is a fancy yes. long drop. So it's sort of an exclusive glamping almost. It is a no? glamping site, yes. Oh, and it's it completely self-catering. We supply everything you might need. Uh, the only things you will have to bring is a towel, mm -hmm. your food, and when lockdown and is finished, you can bring <laughs> some wine. Well, I look forward to coming, spending a weekend here. I can just see myself in this location and thank you. It was Pleasure. wonderful thank meeting you, you yet again. <laughs> taken you away from uh, um, preparing your fish now because I'd like to find out a little bit more about you. So how long have you been a fisherman? I am 40 years plus a fisherman. Wow that's amazing and is the life of, of a fisherman easy for you or is it a difficult life? It was easy but now it's difficult because you have for all, the, all the fish you catch you, you must have a permit. Okay, so that has made it very difficult yeah. for you because before you could go out whenever out. you wanted to yes. and catch your fish and sell it and now with the permit. Yeah. Being a fisherman already must be a very difficult life. Yeah, no fish, no pay. Exactly. Okay, well we're looking forward to eating a fish with you tonight. I'm really looking forward to that. You're a fabulous chef, I'm sure. <laughs> Being a fisherman's village, we needed to discover the different traditional ways of cooking snook or mackerel. So we visited Gareth. So the best part about fishing is that you need to have it prepared while it's very fresh. 
I'm only going to cut it out first, and after that I'm going to spice it, and after that I'm going to prepare the, prepare the um, smoker, and just put it up in there. Normally people like to, to prepare it while it's in, 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 in a complete size still, but I prefer it to be cut up, because once you break it after that it's done. It's, it's a lot of mess. The, the fish break into pieces and it's not, it doesn't look nice, especially when you prepare it for somebody. See, so you get different kind of smokers. My one is an ordinary stainless steel one. I prefer the old school way, where you prepare coals. And this is the traditional way of doing it then as well, no? Because well, everybody good. like it like this. Normally the traditional way would be to, to say we deep fry. Mm. I got a Monday night in this village. We like to have fish. Every, it's like, you can go all over. You can go try everybody, almost every second or you will find on a Monday night. People like to eat fish. What's special about Monday night? Is I it? don't know. Hey. Half an hour to 40 minutes, and it's done. Jacob's Bay was named after a colonial trader who used the sheltered bay to load his grain. Today it is a true gem of tranquility. Another hidden gem is Pixieland, where we'll be chatting with Mama Pixie. So Mama Pixie, this is another world in its own. Um, can you tell us why this all started? Where was it birthed from? You've got a farm because you're in the town of Mpanza. Okay. And you know, I wanted to bring that piece because here I find it. Then you go in there, it's a glade and it's quiet and it's green and it's dark. Trees are high, but it's dark. And you look up and you just see all these little nahabis, mm -hmm. the little eyes looking at you. But there was a presence and I don't mm. care what anybody says. There was a presence, mm. and I brought them all here. Okay, so how long has this been here? How, when been, did you start? Well, I've the took us three and a half years wow. to do. Mm. So once people come and visit Pixieland, do they uh, get a tour with you, and you explain all of this to some them? Some of them I do, some yeah. it depends. Okay. But what I do find, I've even had a few women that start crying because of the piece. Because huh. we don't hear that piece yeah. anymore, yeah. and that's my music. This. I mean, if we all keep quiet there and listen to it, just two minutes, listen. That's tranquility Isn't that in music? a bottle. Isn't that I music? I mean, that is music to anybody's ears. Absolutely. And I think coming from the city limits from where we all come from, this is pretty much and heaven. And this is exactly the, the silence you heard on the farm. Sure. You can hear the wind blowing through maybe the, the trees at the top there, but it's sure. a different sound, you know. Yeah. It's too much. Huh? Yeah. Now this is what people long for. Yeah. This is what just we uh, yeah, what we need in our yeah. lives sometimes. Just that peace and a lot of pixie influence. And then of course we've got you, <laughs> and that's the flavor that you add. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Much thank you. Hi, we're in Jacob's Bay today with Christo, one of our locals that lives here, and he's going to take us around some bays today. Christo, yeah. where are you taking us today? Well, we're starting here at Jacob's Bay. This is Jacob's Bay, this one. Then just next to it is uh, Hospital Bay. And so they continue. The next one is Bamboos Bay, and then it is Small Bay, and then it is Kwai Bay, and then it's Murisa Bay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we're going to visit all of that today. So, so let's go do this. It's a lovely day today, sun is shining, little bit wind, and it's time for adventure. So let's go for it. So we're in Jakobs Bay proper. Morisa Bay. At the back of us there are the two towers. What are they about? Yeah, it's from the Second World War. Yeah. It's called block houses. Okay. And they used to be uh, go on top to look for submarines. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's such a lot of text here. Let's continue on our journey. Right, Christo, yes. we're here at Hospital Bay. Jakobs Bay is famous for this bay. Tell us uh, something about this bay. But in short, it was named, uh, got its name because they treated the soldiers in the Second World War. 
with this red cross tents here on the beach. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, these metal structures at the back here. What are they? Where does that come from? Yeah, it was barges that were pulled behind the boat and it came loose in one terrible sea storm. Uh, yeah, it washed out here on, on the rocks. It was okay. huge, like seven, eight stories high. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And the four portions has left. Well, I love this bay. Let's continue. Christo, we're with you today in Jakobs Bay and you're an artist. Um, yeah. I believe you work in which medium? Acrylic? Acrylic. Yeah. Acrylic, fantastic. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I've painted all my life, but for the past 19 years, I on the West Coast, painting full time. And then my studio is always open to the public. And you know, sometimes we have exhibitions here. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, the, the donkey karikis and the fishermen houses will seem like always be popular. So we're here with Haneli. We're at the Estequiti Yata, which is right here at her home. So they love their passion and their art. So Haneli, tell me, the Estequiti Yata, what inspired you to do that? Um, I have a real love for arts and theatre and music. So it's something that I wanted to do and with the whole house all to myself. Um, I was looking for, actually for space for about three, four, five years and I couldn't find the right space until I recognized it, but I had it with me. So then I started the Ace Queen, the Art Rise. Awesome, mm. that's lovely and it's inspired by one of our writers too. Yeah, um, I, I struggled with a name so one morning I was listening to Alice Pienai and they were doing an interview with um, Breiten Breitenbach. And I can't remember if it's a, a book's name or a, a new article or a story you wrote, but it was named um, The Ace of Page. spoke to you. Yeah. So now we're coming to my passion. Stories, especially the way we do it. Stoop stories. And we see the sign right here. So how do you guys do about it in this community? On Friday um, afternoons or on Saturdays, this is like 6.30. So oh, everybody in their own bottle it. of wine. And it's just a gathering. So. Now that is how we do it, you know, story. Thank you very much. Ah, looking forward. We're going to see the rest of the theatre now, right? Okay. Let's do that. Enjoy. I don't know if I should go Just because you said so Are there little things about me You want to change To scream away The pain I've been looking at these words to tell you My shoes are at the door It's not that I don't need you It's just that I don't want to lose my soul we were lucky enough to bump into Shane Sonkent, who's the wonderful voice behind our theme song, Where to Go. Thank you so much for joining us on our trip to the West Coast. Be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribing is free. So hit that notification bell to be sure you don't miss out on any of our new adventures that we'll be enjoying and hoping that you will be along for the ride with us. Go?